Hello seniors, today we're going to see electronic assignment number six, which is about geometric, geometric sequences. Up to now, you have seen the general concept of patterns and sequences, and we've got into one type of sequence, which is an arithmetic sequence, right? Remember that in an arithmetic sequence, there's a common difference between the terms. And we've also seen the concept of arithmetic series, which is just the addition of um, all of the terms in a geometric sequence. Okay, so for today, we're going to see geometric sequences. The objectives of this class are two. Number one, use the formula for the nth term of a geometric sequence. And number two, apply geometric sequences to solve problems. So basically what we're going to do is do the same kind of the same class we did for uh, arithmetic sequences, but we're going to do it with geometric sequences this time. So it says, given the sequence 2, 6, 18, 50, 54, what pattern can you notice here? How do we obtain 6 from 2? We can multiply this by 3, right? Then 6 by 18 gives us 54, and 18 times 3 also gives us uh, 54, okay? So in a geometric sequence, we have something called the common ratio okay instead of common difference so it says um this the value of each term is three times the previous term this is an example of a geometric sequence or geometric progression also called so it says in a geometric sequence each term can be obtained by multiplying the previous term by a constant value that's the main difference with arithmetic in the arithmetic we added a constant value to the previous term. In this case, we are multiplying the previous term by a constant value. This is called the common ratio. In arithmetic sequence, we call it common difference, okay? So this is symbolized with an R. In an arithmetic sequence, we use D, right? For the common difference. Okay, observation. The common ratio R can be positive or negative. So try to think here, before we do the examples. What do you think? should happen if the common ratio is positive and what do you think should happen when the common ratio is negative hmm. okay let's see with two with some examples it says find the first term u1 and the common ratio r of the following geometric sequences so u1 is the same thing as we've seen for arithmetic sequences it's the first term of the sequence so in part a u1 would be one right is a common uh, sorry the first term u1 and then the common ratio remember the word ratio is a synonym for division okay division okay so the common ratio in this case remember the ratio is r would be always the second term divided by the previous term okay so it's 5 divided by 1 or we could also say, for example, 25 divided by 5, and the number would be the same, right? So the common ratio is 5 in this case. U1 is 1, and the common ratio is 5. Example B. 3, negative 6, 12, negative 24. So U1 in this case would be 3. And the common ratio should be, you can grab any pair of terms, of consecutive terms, for example, negative 6 divided by 3, and we get the common ratio, which is negative 2. So pay attention here. When the common ratio is negative, like in this case, what happens to the sequence? It just changes its sign. First it's positive, then it's negative, positive, negative, positive, negative, and so on, okay? So remember that. Remember that in an arithmetic sequence, Whenever we had a negative common difference, what happened to the, to the sequence? It was a decreasing sequence, right? In this case, it's not decreasing. If we look at the, at the absolute value of each of the terms, you're going to see that the, the sequence is actually increasing, right? But what the negative is doing is uh, just changing the signs each time, okay? So given that concept, what do you think, or how do you think the common ratio should be 
for a geometric sequence to be decreasing. Try to think about that for a second and then keep on looking at the video, video tutorial. So part C, in this case, U1 is 81 and the common ratio is 27 divided by 81. Remember, it's always the second term divided by the previous term, okay? So this gives us, if we simplify this, if we divide it by 9, this would be a 9 and 3. No, if we divide it by 27, this would be 3 and this would be 1. Okay, so this is 1 third. The common ratio is 1 third. So look at this. If the common ratio is a number, if R is less than 1, I'm going to put, write it like this. If the absolute value of R is less than 1, then we're talking about a decreasing geometric sequence. You see that in this case for part C, this is decreasing, right? 81, 27, 9, 3. So what's the condition to get a decreasing geometric sequence? That the value of R should be less than 1, okay? The absolute value of R because it may be negative as well. So that's the condition to get a decreasing geometric sequence. It's not that it should be a negative, um, the ratio should have a negative sign that, like we had in an arithmetic sequence. Okay. Last example, U1 in this case would be K and the common ratio, we could do for example this divided by this, the common ratio would be K to the power of 4 divided by K to the power of 3 and this is K, okay? That's the common ratio, ratio in this case. Okay, that's it. Remember this simplifies, all of this simplifies, it becomes a 1. Now I'm going to show you the formula, the general formula to find the nth term of a geometric sequence, just as we did with an arithmetic sequence. So consider this example over here, 2, 6, 18, 54, and so on. U1, as you know, is the first term, right? How do we obtain the second term? We obtain the second term by doing 2 times 3, right, which is 6. So what we're doing is we're multiplying the first term by a common ratio, which is this r over here, okay? That's how we obtain u2. So u2 is the same as saying u1 times r. Then u3, the third term, is obtained by multiplying the second term by the common ratio, 6 times 3 gives a as 18, right? So it's u2 times the common ratio, but we know that u2 is what what it's up here, right? u1 times r. So we rewrite, instead of writing u2, we're gonna write u1 times r, and then multiply it again by an r, and we get u1 times r squared. And if we follow the same logic, we're gonna obtain u1 times r cubed, u1 times r to the power of four, and so on. So if you can see, for example, in the third, for u3, what do we have? That the exponent of the r is one number less than the term number, okay? If we want to find u3, it's r squared. If we want to find u4, it's r cubed, and so on. So the general formula is the one that you can see here. un equals u1 times r to the power of n minus r one okay which is the same thing as writing it like this without parentheses so un is the nth term u1 is the first term n is a term number and r is a common ratio remember that this formula is available in the formula booklet this is the formula booklet topic one algebra and you have it here okay un equals u1 times r to the power of n minus 1. This is the nth term of a geometric sequence. So remember, we've seen this formula, which is an arithmetic sequence, the sum, which is for an arithmetic series, and now we're seeing 
um, the nth term of a geometric sequence. Okay, then we're gonna see these cases, which are, which are the sums of an of geometric sequences, which we will call geometric series. Okay, let's see some examples. Find the ninth term of the sequence. So we have this is the first term, and then we have all of the rest of the terms. We have the ellipsis. This means that it continues indefinitely. Okay, so same thing as an as an arithmetic sequence. We first identify u one, which is one, and we're not told if this is a geometric sequence. So we need to prove first that this is a geometric sequence. So what are we gonna do? We're gonna start by dividing that this term divided by this. So r equals four divided by one, which is four. Then if we do 16 divided by 4, we should get the same number, right? 16 divided by 4, this gives us 4. So this is a geometric sequence. If you see, if we try doing for an arithmetic sequence, if we try to see if it's an arithmetic sequence, what, what we're going to do is the following. D equals 4 minus 1 first, this gives us 3. And then if we do the next two terms, it will be 16 minus 4, and this is 12. So the common difference is not constant. So this is not a, an arithmetic sequence, okay? So we can discard the idea that this is an arithmetic sequence. So it's actually geometric because the common ratio remains constant. Okay, so we have u1, we have r. So now we want to find the ninth term, so we're going to apply the formula, this one over here. And we're going to say u9, the ninth term, is u1 times r to the power of 9 minus 1. So this is u9, which we want to find, equals 1 times 4 to the power of 8. So then we get the value of u9, which is 4 to the power of 8, which is... A very big number. Six five five three six. You see that in a geometric sequence numbers behave exponentially, right? In an arithmetic sequence, uh, the number increase behaves like a linear function. In this case it's exponential. So that's U9, the ninth term. Next example. Find the twelfth term of this sequence. So it's the same thing. We we already have u1 and we may calculate the common ratio or see if it's a geometric sequence first and then determine the 12th term. So u1, 7, then the common ratio would be negative 14 divided by 7, which is negative 2. We should make the verification to see if it's actually a geometric sequence, so we're going to do the next two terms divided by negative 14, this also gives us negative 2 so yes, this is a, an arithmetic sequence, if we try doing it as an, sorry, a geometric sequence, if we try doing this as an arithmetic we would get negative 14 minus 7, which is negative 21 and then if we do with this second pair of numbers, 28 minus minus 14 this would be actually a positive number this would be positive 42 right so these are not the same so it's not an arithmetic sequence okay um so we have u1 we have r so the 12th term would be u12 equals u1 times r which is negative 2 i'm going to write the formula first r to the power of 12 minus 1 so this is u12 equals. What do you think the, the sign of u12 should be, positive or negative? It should be negative because the uh, pair, pair number of terms uh, are all negative. 2, 4, 6 correspond to negative numbers. So u12 is 7 and times r, which is negative 2 to the power of 11. So u12 equals 2 to the power of 11 gives us negative 
2001. So we get this number, negative 14, 3, 3, 6. That's U12. And it's negative, so it means we did this the right way. Remember that negative 2 in your calculators, you should put it in parentheses, okay? Or else, well, in this case, the answer is negative, but in case this was a positive, uh, uneven exponent, then you would get a, a wrong result. Okay, so that's U12. Then, example 8. In a geometric sequence, U1 is this, U4 is this. Find the common ratio. So, in this case, we are told that this is a geometric sequence. So, we can treat this problem as a geometric sequence directly. So, we already have U1, which is 864. And we're given U4, which is 256. So, how do we calculate the common ratio if we're given these two pieces of information? Once again, we can just apply the formula. I'm going to bring the formula here. If we apply this formula, if we apply this formula, this would be U4 equals U1 times R to the power of 4 minus 1. And we have all of the information except R, so we can solve for R. U4 would be 256. U1 is 864 times R cubed. If you see this sequence, you see that this seems to be a decreasing sequence, right? So the value of R should be a value less than 1, okay? And it should be positive because all of the terms are positive here. Okay, so by solving this, 256 divided by 864 is r cube this gives us divided by 864 this is 8 over 27 this is r cube so then we do the cubic root both sides 8 over 27 cubic root cubic root of r cube this simplifies with this so the value of r is the cubic root of this number, which would be 2 thirds, right? 2 thirds. And since this is a cubic root, it's only one answer. It's not plus or minus 2 thirds. And that's only when the, the index of the root is negative, is even, sorry. So this is the only answer. r equals 2 thirds. If you want, you can always verify your result. I'm going to do it in a different color. We can calculate the value of U4 by doing U1, 864, times R, which is 2 thirds, to the power of 4 minus 1. And if you plug in these values into your calculator, you should get 864 times 2 thirds to the power of 3. And this is 256. So this is correct. Okay. Next example. This is the last one. It says, for a geometric sequence, 5, 15, 45, and so on, find the least value of n such that the nth term is greater than 5,000. Okay. So, you see that this keeps on increasing, okay? And we want to find the value of n or the position of the term where the term is a number greater than 50,000, okay? So the first term that is greater than 50,000 is what we're looking for. So, how are we going to do this? We already have u1. u1 is 5. We're told this is a geometric sequence, so we can calculate the common ratio which would be 15 divided by 5. This gives us 3. So we have u1 and we have the common ratio. So now we need to find which term is greater than 50,000. I'm going to show you two ways of solving this. Both of them require the use of calculator, obviously, but um, I'm still going to show you two ways. The first one, which I like the most, is by doing the following. 
I'm gonna write that 50,000 is like a term in the sequence, although it is, it, it, it is not, this is not true. Uh, but with this information, I will estimate the value of n, or I will find the value of n, actually. So 50,000 is, uh, wait, remember, I'm applying this formula, okay? I'm gonna bring it. I'm always applying this formula. So that's the general formula. So 50,000, I'll treat it as my un, although it's not un, is u1, which is five times three to the power of n minus one. I wanna know the value of n. So how do we solve this? A very common mistake is that, that students first tend to multiply these two terms, but we cannot multiply these two terms because this one, the three, is being affected by an exponent. So don't multiply those two terms. The first thing we should do is take this five dividing here, okay? So I'm gonna do that step here. 50,000 divided by five equals three to the power of n minus one, okay? This is 10,000 equals three to the power of n minus one. And then how do we solve this? If we wanna, if we wanna solve for n, you see that the n is in the exponent. Whenever we have the variable in the exponent, how do we do to solve this? We need to apply logarithms. Okay, so this would be logarithm of 10,000 equals the logarithm of three to the power of n minus one. Whenever we apply logarithm, remember the, the rule, we can take down the exponent to the front, okay? So this is log of 10,000 equals n minus one times log of three. So finally, in order to solve for n, we would take the log three dividing. So this would be log of 10,000 divided by log of three, and this should equal n minus one. By using our calculators, we're gonna calculate that division. This is log of 10,000 divided by log of 10,000 divided by log of three. This gives us 8.38. If we round these two three significant figures, so this is n minus one. So finally, the value of n would give us 9.38 but remember, n can never be a decimal number. It should always be an integer. And where do you think we should round this value of n? We should round it to nine or should we round it to 10? Pay attention at the exercise. At the exercise. If we want a value of n such that the nth term is greater than 50,000, then the value of n should be rounded up, okay? So the value of 10 of n is actually 10, okay, it's not nine, because if it was nine, then the ninth term would be a number which is less than 50,000, okay? So the 10th term should be the first term which is greater than 50,000, okay? We're gonna verify that later on. What I want to show you now is a, an alternative way of solving this, in which we're gonna use GDC. I'm gonna show you that here. So by using GDC, what we're gonna do is the following. Um, you're gonna plug in, you're gonna go to menu, table, menu table, plug in the function, plug in function, I'm gonna show you that here. Then I'm gonna end up writing the steps. So this is your calculator. If you go to menu, this is a menu table, which is menu seven. You're gonna plug in the function there. The function in our case is, wait, I don't remember. Five, okay. The function is, five times three times three 
to the power of oh let me do it to the power of to the power of here to the power of x minus one okay so remember the the n is our variable so that's how you should plug in the function and then you go to before before clicking on table you should first click on set so f5 and um you should try for example put in here in the end uh, try 20 so this would calculate from u1 the first term to u20 which is the 20th term and step is one okay so we go back we go back and then you click on table f6 Oop. sorry i wrote the value of x wrong here it should actually be this x over here same thing <laughs> so table ah there you get the values okay so the first term is 5 the second term is 15 the third term is 45 the fourth term one thirty-five, the fifth and so on okay so we want the first term which is greater than 50,000, right? So if you see U8 is still less, U9 is still less, and U10 gives us 9845, which is a 415, which is a number greater than 50,000. And it's the first one being greater than that one. Okay, so I'm going to take this picture. I'm going to take it here. So that is the first value of n, which is greater than 50,000. Okay. So uh, how do you show your steps? If you're going to do this by this method, how do you show steps in an exam? What you're going to do is, wait, here I'm going to put search for first term greater than 50,000 50,000 okay so in order to show some process in an exam what you will do is once you have identified which term corresponds to the first term that is greater than 50,000 you should show in your exam first calculate one term less so that's the value of u9 5 times 3 to the power of 9 minus 1. This gives us 3, 2, 8, 0, 5, which is the number we have here. And then you calculate the value of u10. You show these two values. So this is 5 times 3 to the power of 10 minus 1. And this gives us 9, 8, 4, 1, 5, which is this value over here. So then we conclude that n equals 10 is the first one that gives us a number greater than 50,000. And that's it, people. This is it for today's class. Um, for the next theoretical class, we're going to study geometric series, which is the addition of uh, terms in a geometric sequence. And then you're going to keep on practicing with some exercises. If you have any doubts, remember, you can always ask in the Google Classroom.